and that was actually a really good segue, Sean, because you know, uh, going on ESPN, because our next speaker, you're going to cross paths, is Matt Murphy. Uh, Matt's the senior vice. Hey, thank you. Matt's the senior vice president, digital video distribution for Disney and ESPN Media Networks. How are you, Matt? How are you? Good, good, good. Thanks and thank for you for me. being patient back there. Absolutely. Did you see the tweets that were on I was ESPN? pleased to see uh, Sports Center was trending well on there. Yeah? It's great. Yeah, and, uh, and I think he mentioned that ABC was one of the companies that, is currently, that he's currently talking with, and you guys are being obviously very, very active with regards to taking on the second screen. We are. We are. It's kind of our DNA. So um, we're gonna, you know, one of the second screen experiences that we're very focused on right now is um, our authenticated services. Uh, at the Walt Disney Company, we put them under the brand name of Watch, Watch ESPN, Watch Disney Channel, Watch uh, Disney XD. Mm -hmm. um, we launched our first authenticated network about a year and a half ago with Time Warner Cable, Bright House, and Verizon. Right. Uh, and subsequently, and most recently, with Comcast. So we're very pleased we're now in about 40 million households. And uh, soon we'll be launching the Disney Channel services, Disney XD, Disney Channel, Disney Junior, very shortly with Comcast as well. So That's great. Um, we're very pleased with what we're doing. And what I'll show you shortly here in the demonstration is that uh, our emphasis is uh, primarily on the live linear simulcast of our networks, not just the on-demand services. Can we take a quick look at, uh, at Absolutely. this live here? I think we've got it there for you. All right, so um, this is our Watch ESPN application. Uh, there's both a web version as well as an application version. What you see here is um, a list of our networks. The main area that takes up roughly 75% of the screen, uh, we want to have that prominently featured so you see right away what is available to you. It is a carousel that you can quickly scroll through and take a look at what's available. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, uh, we've taken a page from kind of our experiences with mosaics. So at one glance, you can very quickly see what is on television. It's one of the advantages of this platform. You're not surfing up and down, going back and forth between channels. You see it all at one glance. That's right. So you pick a network that you'd like to watch. It's always the moment of truth. It looks like it is not going to work. Hold on, we're in airplane mode, it looks like, Arthur. Bear with me one moment. Oh, hold on. There it is. Give it one more try. There we go. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, thank you. Um, what we've done here is we stripped out the commercials, and I'll talk about that in a moment as yes, well, please. why we did that. <laughs> With my luck, I'll probably go into every video that is in a commercial right now. All right, so yeah, here's SportsCenter. This is the network itself. If you turned on your television in your home, this is what you'd see. Now we have it available on tablets, mobile phones as well. Mm -hmm. it takes a few moments, obviously, to buffer, but obviously the picture quality inevitably gets better as well. Um, with sports, you know, 99% of the viewership is live. That's why we want to focus on the network itself. Uh, but very straightforward experience here. You can come out of it, again, and, and select a different network. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned before, we stripped out our ads. There's a few reasons why we did that. Right. Uh, when we first launched, we wanted to take them out entirely. Gradually, we've added more, net, uh, more commercials into the networks themselves, including local avails for our affiliates. And the primary reason why we did that is that you know, these devices, whether it be a tablet, a mobile phone, they are different from a television set. They inherently have qualities that allow you to do much more engaging things. Right. Um, whether it be experimenting with ad loads, banner ads, instead of just you know, a traditional 30 second ad. So we wanted the ability to take advantage of the platform to create very compelling advertising experiences. And at the same time, um, you know, just experiment in general, see what works for the consumer. So, so what have you been learning um, with, in that particular area first, too, in terms of how advertising can be changed or enhanced or, or how people want to consume it? It's still early. Right. It is still early. Um, as I said, it, it, you could, we've played around a little bit with ad loads, right. ad formats. Mm -hmm. um, but we do know, for example, that a 30-second ad on a mobile phone just is not as compelling as doing something more engaging. Right. Right. I'll show you just a couple other more of the features here. Because navigation, again, is an ease of discoverability, I think, is one of the inherent qualities of the internet. So you could search by sport, 
Um, if you're a lacrosse fan, for example, it'll pull up a program guide for you, even though there's no, no live lacrosse on right now. Here's a program guide looking ahead from today and obviously in the future, next few days of when other uh, okay. lacrosse games will be on. Oh, you, my, my team didn't make the NCAA, so I, I haven't been watching it. Which team is that? Cornell. They were I, good last year, uh, historically yeah, a good I, team. I don't want to go ahead. Uh, you could also search by network. Again, uh, choose the network that you'd like, and again, a programming guide comes up. So you can look on what's available right now, and obviously hit the play button to hit it, or just gives you a little preview of what's ahead. So you guys, it strikes me you're being very careful about, even though there's different and advanced features, trying to be complementary to what people are, are also going to be getting and, and watching directly on the primary screen, right? So, so would you say, Matt, that overall the, your, your, your sort of design philosophy and approach right now in your second screen apps is really to com to complement as opposed to compete and not move those eyeballs away from that screen but onto this screen? You know, it's an interesting question because I think second screen means many things to different people. Right. Uh, what we're trying to focus on here is uh, aligning what we call our philosophy of the best available screen. So for example, what we have learned here is that in the home, where a lot of the viewership on these different devices occurs, people are using it as a second television set. So whether it be my wife or my children are watching something on the primary television, right. I can then watch ESPN on this device. Um, I have the opportunity because there are so many, for example, lacrosse games on at once, I can watch one on the big screen and one on this screen as well. On the mobile phone, for example, is a different experience. That's much more mobile, yeah. obviously. When you're out and about, we call that the game savior. If you want to see that Cornell lacrosse game, but you're out at the store or somewhere else, that is the best screen available to you. And you will watch it there because that's all you can do. And I have watched it on it. We appreciate the support for it. So yeah. that's just one example of what we're doing. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things you can do around stats and scores as well. Yeah, that's, that's the, the other thing I wanted to ask you is on, in terms of additional learnings, are you learning more things about your viewers in particular? And, and is that, uh, are you getting even some early inklings of what you would like to do as a result of that? We are learning, uh, both in terms from the data that we see, but also a lot of focus groups that we've done. Mm -hmm. So a few things that we learned, we talked about the use cases of how consumers are using it. Uh, that's been a big one in terms of in the home and out of the home, and therefore how do you program appropriately. We've learned that actually uh, for our affiliates, uh, there's a tremendous halo effect for those affiliates that offer authenticated services. Their consumers have a, a much greater perception of them being uh, more progressive, more cutting edge, and greater value, which is you know, a big reason why we did this. We wanted to provide greater value to our affiliates in that underlying television subscription. We've also learned, and this is, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, that you know, the registration and the authentication process um, has its challenges. Right. Um, it is getting better, but we have to continue to refine and make those, uh, those processes as, as frictionless as possible, because you don't want to create barriers for the consumer to get to the content that they want or they'll go somewhere else. So we've learned that you have to improve that. And I think the last part would be marketing. And it should be no surprise to anyone this, this group that um, the marketing has to be crisp, it has to be clear. The consumer proposition has to be very clear of what it is mm -hmm. and, and what it means to the consumer, why they need it. They don't always know. So um, those are probably the areas that we're focused on in terms of what else we need to continue to do to make this experience better. So at ESPN and, and Disney, is it safe to assume that um, how you're going to be programming new content and, and new creative moving forward will take into account these multiple screens, right? Absolutely, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. I think one of the things that's very exciting about uh, making your networks and shows available on these types of screens is that it's IP-based, right. uh, which gives you a lot more flexibility to do more engaging things than traditional television. And so you're now allowed to create more engaging programming, more compelling programming than perhaps you normally have been able to. Um, so in a, at the same time, a mobile phone is a mm -hmm. different experience from a tablet, which is different from television. So absolutely, you have to program to the platform, and you have to take advantage of the capabilities of that platform. Well, thank you. Thanks, Matt. And uh, why don't absolutely. we give Matt a hand? And looking forward to, especially, I think you said, uh, the Disney application? Disney applications are watching soon. So if you're a Comcast <laughs> subscriber, you'll something to look forward to. Very cool. Thanks, Thank you, Arthur. Have a great day. You too. Um, okay.